Hello, I'm JW. Uh, continuing with the uh, CNC build, and this time we're going to be looking at the stepper motors. Here's one of them. There's actually four of these, but they're all the same, so we'll just have a look at the one. And the uh, stepper motors are what actually moves the various parts of the machine, so you can position the cutting tool and obviously move it through the material. And unlike normal motors, uh, these, uh, though they do actually rotate, they don't rotate continuously. They actually move in very small steps, hence the name uh, stepper motor. Now there's many types and sizes of motors you can buy. Uh, these ones are a fairly common uh, arrangement where you've actually got 200 steps to make a full revolution. And that works out it's actually 1.8 degrees of movement per step. And uh, these particular ones have uh, eight wire connections, although we're actually going to be wiring it up as if it only had four. So this is the motor we've got for this one. And uh, this particular one so it has an eight wire connection here. This is the output uh, shaft here, it's basically just round with a slight flat on the one side. Four holes for mounting, and uh, the other end plane, it does have the shaft extended through the back, but uh, we don't actually need that in this application. And here's the actual model number on the side here, uh, so that's the uh, place it was actually obtained from. Now the specifications for this motor are on this uh, piece of paper here. So here it is, and as you see here it's 1.8 degrees per step, so of course that makes 200 per 360 degree revolution. And uh, this has eight wires, so you've got three options of wiring it up, so parallel series and unipolar. We're going to be wiring it up in parallel, and uh, this will give us the uh, greatest amount of torque, and also it means that the current is high, but the actual voltage we're driving it at is going to be relatively low. And if we did it in series, we'd need half the current, but it would need twice the voltage to get the uh, same amount of holding torque. And then the unipolar requires somewhere in the middle, so it's sort of 2.8 amps there, but uh, the uh, holding torque is also considerably less. But uh, parallel is the one that we're going to be using. And uh, if we have a look at the bottom here, we can see the wiring arrangements that you've got. Now these motors are typically drawn uh, as we've got here, so essentially it's the rotor uh, winding on uh, this axis and then winding at 90 degrees to that. Now in terms of the actual motor, they're not actually constructed like that internally. The windings, there's several of them, they go around in a circular arrangement, but uh, there are basically two sets of windings, each one essentially 90 degrees apart from the other. And on these ones, uh, the two windings, uh, obviously shown as the sort of horizontal ones and the vertical, and these have actually got two separate windings for each pair as well. Now if you bought a motor which had four wires, you would essentially end up with an arrangement like this. So essentially you've got uh, just two wires here for this winding, and the two wires there for the opposing winding. And of course you can wire this particular one up just by uh, linking together, in this case the yellow and blue and the orange and brown wires, and then just powering it from the four that are left. Now I'll say the problem with doing that is that the, although the current is less, you need a much higher voltage to actually get the same output torque. So we're not going to be using that. The uh, option we are using here in the middle, which essentially places the two separate parts of the winding in parallel, and then again we just bring out the two wires for each of the opposite windings. And the third option here, which again we're not going to be using this, but if you wanted to and you had a driver which had a three terminal output, then you can actually have them in this arrangement. So they're actually in the series with basically a centre tap to the middle of each winding there. So that would be a uh, six wire arrangement. Now you can buy step motors say, like this, which just have the four wires, which means you're basically stuck with that arrangement. You can also buy them with six wires, which is essentially this arrangement here. Or you can get them with eight, which means you can wire it up in any one of those three combinations. Now here's the actual motor, and here are the various coloured wires. And this one is supplied just literally with the wires just coming out of the hole on the side there. So we need to, of course, attach this to something else. So we can, of course, uh, wire it into the control cabinet. And we've only got sort of uh, probably about 12 inches of wire or so on the end of that. And if we follow the diagram here, essentially we want to connect together pairs of the wires, so we essentially end up with four individual wires coming out. Now I've already determined which pairs we want, so essentially what we're going to be doing is connecting or commoning together the red and blue wires, the yellow and black, and that will form uh, basically one of the actual windings, and then white and brown together, and then orange and green together, and then again those two will then form the other one. And uh, I've numbered them here, one, three, two, and four. That will correspond to the numbered cores in the cable, which we're going to attach to the actual ends of the coloured wires. 
Now I say we also need to extend these cables considerably so they can obviously reach to the control cabinet. And this is the cable we're going to be using, it's CY cable, it has five cores inside and each one is 0.75 square millimetres. And to keep this insulated, and this happens to be a 50 meter roll because once you get above about buying about 10 meters, it's just as cheap, in fact, often cheaper just to buy the entire roll of it. So, I've got quite a lot of that cable there. Now, CY cable is a shielded cable, meaning it has an outer braided covering under the uh, insulation here. And this is important because these things are driven in steps, the controller essentially is putting pulses of electricity onto these wires. And to get this to rotate at even a few revolutions per minute, you kind of have to send many hundreds, or in fact thousands, of pulses through these things. And unfortunately, if you just had bare wires like this extending for many metres across the room, if you then send lots of pulses of electricity into them, they're going to act as a radio antenna, and basically transmit huge amounts of interference all over the place. And aside from probably being illegal, that's not desirable either, because it's obviously going to interfere with a whole kind of equipment in the vicinity, and in your neighbour's house, and so on. So we're going to use this uh, say shielded cable. Now uh, this has a PVC covering, so the first thing you want to do is just to strip away some of the outer covering, and then uh, we'll see what we've got inside. So just use a knife here to slip that along the length. Now we'll just score this for most of the length here so we don't damage the insides. And when we get to the end we can actually cut in, because of course the end's going to be uh, chopped off anyhow. And then it'll be fairly easy just to peel away the outer covering in a fairly controlled fashion. And we can see here the uh, actual markings again on the side there, just for the same as on the label. So inside then we've got the braided covering. This is tinned copper, so it looks quite uh, shiny there. Underneath that we've got this sort of plastic covering. Let's just twist it around. And inside there we've got a bit of filler, which is just sort of a nylon core of some sort. The uh, earth cable there, which we're not actually going to be using because these aren't actually requiring that. And then our four cores. In this case they're all black, but they do have numbering printed on in white. So we just need to uh, trim away the outer grey covering, so we don't uh, need that. And then the braid here, we're actually going to be uh, just sort of sliding that back here. And it will sort of just bunch up in a fashion there. And we will use that again later, as we'll shortly see. Just uncover the uh, plastic braided part there. And just hold it in place because we can use some of this masking tape here just to temporarily fix that. So it doesn't have to get in the way when we're attempting to attach to the wires at this end. Now what I've got here then is say the four wires, it's got this rope thing which is basically just a filler to make the cable sort of more circular and in cross section. So we'll just untangle the various wires here. Now the rope part we don't actually need, so we'll cut that off I'm fairly near to the uh, end of the equipment there, so again we can get rid of that. Now we only need four wires, which will be the four black ones in this case. The uh, earth here we're not going to connect because the motor has no way of uh, connecting earth to it, so it's not actually uh, necessary or even desirable. So what we'll do with this one is we'll cut it off fairly close to the point here, and um, again, we'll just dispose of that. Now this won't actually be connected to anything, so uh, in one way we'll just leave it, but um, because it's part of the sharp points of uh, copper there, it's got a small piece of heat shrink here which we'll just place over that. And we'll leave uh, a moderate length sticking out, so if we take the heat gun... And we can actually just shrink that uh, down like that. And then while hot, we can just bend the end over. And that will hold that in position and basically stop any uh, sharp points to cutting into the uh, other conductors here. So now we've just got four black cores, which are pretty much uh, ready for connection. And uh, before we uh, do anything else, we need to attend to these wires coming off of the motor here. Now we've got eight of these, but of course we've only got four wires, so we need to pair these up. So then we've eventually come and got four, and then we'll obviously attach to the four. And I say we've already made that little list of what we've got before. So the first pair we want is the red and blue. 
and uh, when we're going to do these uh, what we want to do is to get in here so that uh, we get the point where the red and blue are actually there what we don't want is sort of red and blue and then sort of pulling it over the top of say the others or something so just find the red and blue and then we'll just twist those two together and then once we've done that we can hold this end and then just run along that towards the motor and that will hold those without them uh, twisting all over the place. What you don't want to do is to pull here because that could obviously damage the wires here if you're pulling on it so hold that end and just work backwards. So that's the red and blue and then um, we'll just do the other pairs in the same way so uh, the next one is the yellow and black wires so again we'll just uh, maneuver these around so we get the yellow and black pretty much close together there and again we'll just twist those together and uh, next we have the white and brown so that will be uh, these two here and finally this is with orange and green so we'll just do that as before now, of course, bear in mind if you're doing this on a similar system, the colours of wires may not be the same, so obviously check the specifications for the particular motor you're using, because there's every good chance that the colours may be different. And certainly if you're buying motors with a different number of wires, then they will definitely be different. So orange and green there, so that's the final pair like that. So I'll just uh, sort those. So now we've basically got four basically wires coming out of there, which we can now connect to the four black wires we've got over there. So what we need to do now is just connect the black wires to each pair of the coloured wires from the motor. And I've actually arranged these so that uh, the odd numbered cores here, so we've got one and three here, will be one of the windings and then the even numbers, as in two and four, will be the others, so one and three and two and four. So we'll start out with number one. These are just printed on in white here, it's probably a bit difficult to see on the camera, but basically it's got the number one printed along at various intervals along the length of the wire. Now for joining these we're actually going to be soldering them and we want to make sure that the joins are actually staggered because we don't want it to be a big uh, set of connections say we did them all here we'd have quite a fat section there so I'm going to cut this one fairly close to the motor but of course leave quite a long length of the black wire over here and then we can just stagger the others down there so that they are all in at slightly different positions. So I'm actually going to just trim the length of this off somewhat for reasons we'll see later and then we're going to say position it here and then we're just going to trim off the red and blue there so that they're the same length and then we'll just strip the end of those wires like that and then we'll twist these two together Now we're just leaving sort of quarter inch or so of uh, exposed copper there. This piece we don't need, so that goes in the garbage. And then this wire here, again, we'll just strip off the end of this. And we're going to use uh, a longer section of exposed copper there. These are actually silver coloured, which implies they're either tinned copper or maybe they're not copper at all, but who knows. But now for joining these, uh, we're actually going to do a twist on these and then uh, solder them together and then some heat shrink will cover the join so obviously so it doesn't have any exposed bits so we'll just thread the piece of heat shrink over the black wire there just get that out of the way and we'll place these two like that so basically one uh, overlapped in the center there and that's at the bottom of that one and then we'll twist the top parts of those together so I've got those twisted there and we've got a section of uh, the other wire just exposed and then we can actually fold that over like that and then that will obviously give a bit of space there without the insulation in the way it gives it a more sort of a flat joint there so we can cover that with the heat shrink in a moment so we need to solder that uh, together so we'll uh, just do that 
So the joints are now soldered, and then we just need to slide the heat shrink over, which is obviously what we put on uh, previously, and then we just shrink that down into position, and then of course that will seal over the joint. Now I'm not going to uh, shrink that at the moment because we're just going to move on to the next one. Now as I said before, we want to actually make sure these are overlapped, so uh, what we'll do is go on to the next collection colour, which is the yellow and black, so that's this one. And again, we want to try and arrange these wires so they don't uh, tangle up on the motor. So yellow and black, and this is actually wire number three, so just locate uh, number three here. So that's this one. Now that one make sure is the wires here are all parallel and we don't have a big sort of kink here somehow because if we made this longer, say we did something like that, when we came to put it together we'd have this big sort of extra loop here. So we want to make sure that these are both pulled with moderate tension. And then of course they'll all lay nice and flat when we come to put the outer covering over the top. So we'll uh, place those two alongside. And again, we want to make the joints uh, further down here, so we'll cut it about there. So we'll first cut the yellow and black. And then we'll cut the black one, but make it slightly longer, because bearing in mind we've got to have that extra part to twist in. So we'll uh, just cut that slightly longer. And as before, various uh, bits of waste there. So exactly the same as before, we'll strip this one like that to a moderate sort of length and then we'll strip this one but again doing it considerably shorter and then we can have that sort of twisty arrangement as we had with the other. So we'll twist those two together like that. Heat shrink of course which we'll need uh, afterwards so we'll just slide that over the wire first. And then here, as before, we'll just place those two on an overlap so we can twist the two ends together. And then fold back the conductor like that. And then as before, we'll just solder that uh, as we did previously. So I've done the other joints there all the same. So as you see, they're all sort of offset by a similar sort of distance. So the next thing to do is just to uh, heat shrink all of these down using the heat gun. So that's all of the joints now uh, probably connected and of course insulated with the heat shrink, so transparent in this case. Now the next step is to basically put this into some sort of an order and for this we'll need the uh, thing here which we just secured temporarily with that tape. And we started, so uh, first thing I want to do is just to remove the tape that we put there temporarily. And we essentially want to reconstruct the cable here as best as we can, putting it back sort of what it was like before. So uh, we've got our crackly plastic inner covering, which we need to basically spiral around the cables here. And the reason we cut off a piece of the black here before we attached it to the first connector is so that this plastic bit will reach to the end of the wires, and so will the braided bit as well. So I just need to uh, put this back around the wires just to hold them together. So that reaches to there, and we'll just use a piece of this uh, insulation tape just to hold that in place temporarily at least while we deal with the rest of the cable. So that's up there, and we'll just place the wrap of that around the end. And then the uh, next part is the braid here, which we can then just slide down over the top of that. So again, sort of restore the shielding of the cable. And again, because we cut off that piece of the black there, this will now easily reach down to the end of the cable here. So again, it's all fully uh, shielded, basically along the entire length. So I'll just uh, pull it down to the end there and hopefully make that reasonably tidy. Now for the end here, I'm just going to use some of this copper tape just to uh, go over the top of that. Which again, should just hold that position there and stop it uh, slipping back along the cable. 
and the self-adhesive so it just sticks down as well. So uh, now the only thing left then is to put something on equivalent to the outer covering just to cover over this uh, section we've got here and for that we'll just use some more heat shrink, this one here which happens to be black. Now of course this is attached to that huge roll on the floor so we'll need to cut off an appropriate length of the cable before we actually do that and we can just slide that on from the other end. And in the case of this one we're going to need about four and a half metres because this is the uh, z-axis motor which of course requires the longest length. So just slide the heat shrink say from the other end of the four and a half odd metres of that and we'll just go over the braided section there completely and of course we'll just cover that so that it will hold all that in position and again we're just going to shrink this in place uh, with the hot air gun and at this end here I've actually allowed quite a bit of overlap that's basically the point at which the grey insulation ends so we've got a good uh, section of overlap there so I'm sure that that doesn't get damaged so uh, that's that one so I'll just uh, heat shrink this down with the uh, hot air gun and uh, then we'll have a look when it's finished so there's the finished result so plenty of uh, length there and of course the uh, section we just joined on going straight into the motor and so this is the z-axis motor so we need all this extra length because it's got to come from the control cabinet onto the machine along the uh, actual movable track on the side of the machine which means we need a big extra loop and then of course across the top of the machine which needs a big extra loop as well and uh, the other three motors of course need to be done also but of course they're pretty much the same deal as this one it's just so I have slightly different lengths of cable on the end but I'm going to cut them quite long anyhow because I've got plenty of spare so a 50 metre roll is far too much but so it's just cheaper to buy that anyhow so uh, I'll have to just uh, spend a considerable amount of time now doing the rest of those and uh, that was much quicker than expected so uh, there's the other three in there and this can also go in there to join them and then all that's remaining then is simply to attach these to the machine which we'll look at at a later time so until then, thanks for watching.